if you are serious about your performance and body composition, you should pay attention to your peri-workout nutrition. Hi, I'm dietitian and coach Astrid here for another episode of The Coach's Corner. In this video, I want to focus on folks who aren't just going to the gym as part of a healthy lifestyle, but also consider themselves athletes and their performance, like for them, is highly important and as much or perhaps even more than their physique. So maybe a little bit of both, but performance for them is very crucial. It is important to mention that the recommendations should be translated into food choices that at the end of the day are consistent with what are your preferences and what's your training schedule or how does your training look like. We'll say that a big priority for performance is given to carbohydrates versus fats or protein. I know that in the past few years, there's been a lot of interest in switching towards strategies that reduce the muscles, reliance on finite substrate like carbohydrates, while exploiting its relatively unlimited stores of fats. So hence we see people moving more towards or trying that lower carb, high fat diet. But although this approach has been shown that uh, it seems to increase muscles capacity to use fat, as main source of fuel and even in well-trained athletes and supported by a few testimonials online and in social media, there are some caveats to this approach. In fact, there, there are several studies of athletes who even adapted to a lower carb, high fat diet, including a ketogenic version lower than 50 grams of carbohydrate per day, having ketosis and all of that. Their performance was okay. It actually was able to only allow people to maintain a good performance if the intensity was to, between low to moderate. But when intensity was very high, low carb, high diet folks weren't not very great at performing and actually performance was impaired. The reason might be that fat oxidation actually requires much more oxygen to produce an amount of ATP similar to that produced by carbohydrate oxidation pathways. And at higher intensity of exercise, oxygen delivery to the muscle is not great. So, you know, that's, that's it. Okay, now going back to what I was meant to, to talk to you today, which was about petty workout nutrition, I could pinpoint two fundamental differences between an athlete or someone who's very serious about their training, and a gym pop diet or a gym goer that just goes for just a normal occasional training um, that's sort of not that very serious. So athletes require additional fluid to cover sweat losses and additional energy to fuel physical activity and this extra energy to be supplied as carbohydrates from carbohydrate-based food groups, breads, cereals, grains, vegetables, fruit, you name it. And obviously needs will vary depending on the sport, the training type, intensity, duration, and your own preferences and personality and what works best for you. But the key point that makes sense to bring up regarding an athlete's diet relates to meal timing and snacks. So as previously mentioned, food and fluid intake around workouts need to be determined obviously on an individual basis and will depend in part on your gastrointestinal characteristics as well as your the intensity of your workout. Let me give you an example. You may tolerate a snack consisting of milk and a sandwich one hour before a low intensity workout, but would be probably uncomfortable if the same meal was consumed before a very hard effort or very high intensity training. In any case, if you are into heavy training or doing multiple workouts a day, you actually might need to eat more than three meals and three snacks per day, and you should make the most out of every possible eating occasion. For example, you could consider eating in close proximity to the end of your workout, having more than one afternoon snack or eating a substantial snack before bed. Well, now let's get to peri-workout nutrition recommendations, shall we? We have pre, during, and post-workout nutrition. So when it comes to pre-workout nutrition, research shows that eating before exercise as opposed to exercising in a fasted state improves performance in a good proportion of athletes, of course. The meal or a snack consumed before competition or an intense workout should prepare you for the coming activity and leave you neither hungry 
nor with undigested food in your stomach. So pretty much ready to go and hit that workout. Before a training session, a meal or a snack should provide sufficient fluid to maintain hydration. So make sure you, you're fully hydrated, which you know that dehydration seems to impair performance. Again, if you are into really important performance, this is key. Secondly, be relatively low in fat and fiber to facilitate gastric emptying and minimize gastrointestinal distress. Be relatively high in carbohydrate to maximize maintenance of your blood glucose. Be moderate in protein to maintain some amino acids available in your muscles as well. And be composed of familiar foods to you that you tolerate well. So there are no surprises when you're actually training and no emergencies. You might be one of those who consumes and enjoy a substantial meal, let's say pancakes, juice, scrambled eggs, like a full meal, two to four hours before exercise or endurance events. Or you might be one of those who actually might suffer from severe gastrointestinal distress following such a meat meal that you might need to rely on liquid meals or something a little bit lighter, closer to your training. Or sometimes people go fasted, as you know. So make sure that you know what works best for you by experimenting with new foods and beverages during practice sessions. Like if you're into preparation for a particular competition, don't, don't play around with meals, or with new things the day of competition or the day of the endurance event. But if you're someone who is into just a regular training, it's okay to experiment every now and then with new things, as long as you are okay to have an emergency every now and then. During a training session though, so when we look at intra-workout nutrition, the primary goal for nutrient consumption is basically to replace fluid losses and provide carbohydrate. We're talking about 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour for maintenance of blood glucose and rapid energy availability and fuel. Whether or not carbohydrate consumption in amounts typically provided in sports drinks, let's say 4 to 8% of glucose or carbohydrates improve performance in events, lasting perhaps one hour or less, has been quite controversial, but current research seems to support the benefit of this practice, especially and mostly in those who exercise in the morning after an overnight fast when, when liver glycogen levels are low, those providing exogenous carbohydrates under these conditions probably would be recommended, especially if you're serious to improve your performance. But if you already ate something prior, you might not need this, or you might not need to consume any carbohydrates if your training is not longer than one hour. For longer training sessions though, or longer events, consuming 0.7 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight per hour, that was again like between 30 to 60 grams per hour has been shown to be very effective to extend endurance performance. Consuming carbohydrates during exercise is even more important in situations when athletes have not carbohydrate loaded, consume pre-exercise meals, or if you're restricted energy intake for weight loss. Thinking about your carbohydrate intake during exercise will depend on what is your specific situation. So in summary, these nutrition guidelines are specifically and especially important for endurance events, lasting probably a little bit longer than an hour. If it's under an hour, you probably won't need this, but it could be beneficial if you've been fasting or you haven't eaten very much in the past few days because you're energy restricted in a calorie deficit. Now, post-workout nutrition. Now, when it comes to this particular one, Timing and composition of your post-workout meal or a snack depend on the length and the intensity of what happened in your training session, whether glycogen depletion occurred and when the next intense workout will occur as well. Timing of post-exercise carbohydrate intakes affects glycogen synthesis over the short term, especially if you're com competing or doing several sessions in a day. So consumption of carbohydrates beginning immediately after the first training session results in higher glycogen levels at six hours sports exercise than when you had an ingestion of carbohydrates delayed or if you just take too much time and uh, even after two hours. You might still have some glycogen synthesis, but it will be much less. However, you might not need to adhere to this if you take one or more days in between intense training sessions to recover 
because when sufficient carbohydrate is provided over a 24-hour period, the timing of intake does not appear to affect the amount of glycogen stored, provided that you also are not needing this rapid available fuel for another training session straight away. Nevertheless, consuming a meal or a snack in close proximity to end of exercise might still be important to meet your daily carbohydrate and energy goals anyways. Now, the type of carbohydrate consumed can also affect post-exercise glycogen synthesis. With regards to whole foods, consumption of carbohydrates with high glycemic index results in higher muscle glycogen levels 24 hours after exercise as compared with the same amount of carbohydrates provided as foods with a low glycemic index. The usefulness of these findings, though, must be considered in conjunction with your overall diet and should likely be reserved for occasions when you want to maximize your post-exercise glycogen synthesis as much as possible. However, when we're thinking about high caloric amounts of carbohydrates or carbohydrate plus protein and fats being provided following endurance or resistance training, glycogen synthesis rates are pretty similar. So adding protein does not necessarily increase or enhance glycogen repletion, Nevertheless, including protein in a post-exercise meal might provide your needed amino acids for muscle protein repair, for good recovery, and promote more anabolic hormonal profile for your gains. Therefore, consuming a mixed meal providing carbohydrates, protein, and fat soon after a strenuous competition or a very interesting training session is recommended and dietitian approved. Now, if you want to maximize hypertrophy, and gains. Protein intake should be prioritized and consumed ideally within the first few hours after a training session. The timing will depend on pre-workout meal though, overall protein intake throughout the day, and your routine. In summary, the dietary goal of a post-workout nutrition plan is to provide adequate energy and carbohydrates to replace muscle glycogen to ensure rapid recovery if you are glycogen depleted after exercise, carbohydrate intake of 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight during the first half an hour, and again, every two hours for four to six hours will be adequate to replace glycogen stores. Again, this is not for the average gym goer. We're talking about people who are perhaps training a few times during the same day. They're having two to three sessions, or they have probably like boxing and they are also lifting or they have like BJJ and training in the afternoon or they're combining a different type of trainings the same day. And lastly, protein consumed after training will provide amino acids for building and repair of your muscle tissue. To close full circle, when choosing a snack before or after a training session, try having a protein and carb-based meal or a snack roughly one to three hours before training to best fuel your workout the larger and denser the meal is, the longer you should give yourself a little bit more time before that day's training session. If you enjoy having a protein shake immediately after training and you have the calorie budget to do so, you could definitely meet your post-workout needs this way. However, if you do not want to do this or you don't have the availability or the capacity to do that, you can go home and have a full meal while still obtaining the same benefits. I hope you took some notes and learned today a bit more about the importance of your nutrition around training sessions. Tell me something. Are you someone who focuses on resistance training, endurance training, a little bit of both? Tell me down below in the comment section. Remember to like, subscribe, give some hearts. Follow me at antidiet underscore dietitian in my Instagram. And for coaching inquiries, you can email me to astrid at and I see you in the next one.